Today, the girls are going to a birthday party for Charlotte. That makes three birthday parties in the same week. Could the authors not think of any other type of party? Argle Bump Book Review Argle Bump Book Review Charlotte looks exactly like Kirsty, but her hair is slightly more wavy. When I saw the picture, it took me a few seconds to realize it's supposed to be a different girl. Charlotte's dress is ruined! Somebody put green paint all over it! Goblins are green, so that means there's a goblin here. No, that logic is dumb. Whatever. Charlotte and her family leave to get the dress dry cleaned, but it turns out the paint is so permanent, it can't be cleaned. Wow, where did the goblin get that paint? And how was the goblin able to carry a can of paint here? Remember, the goblins are four inches tall. Kirsty and Rachel stay behind to decorate the cupcakes. Phoebe the fashion fairy arrives with her heart-shaped magic. I'm not sure why fashion is heart-shaped. The goblin jumps out, squirts her with icing, then steals her party bag. The goblin runs into the playhouse in the backyard. The girls turn into fairies to get there, then immediately turn back into normal-sized girls so they can open the door. They were fairies for a grand total of four pages, which is silly. They didn't need to become fairies in order to go outside. They can't get into the playhouse because the goblin blocked the door with a chair, even though, as I just said, the goblin is four inches tall, he should not be able to move a chair by himself. They decide to lure the goblin out with cupcakes. When that doesn't work, Rachel decides to drown the goblin. I'm not joking, they actually attempt to kill the goblin. She uses a hose to flood the playhouse with water. The water goes all the way up past the window to the girl's waists until the door bursts open. The goblin is carried through the flood into a conveniently located koi pond. Phoebe gets her magic bag back. As you'd expect, she uses her magic to clean up the mess and give the girls new party dresses. Their gift for Charlotte was a headband, but Phoebe changes it into a necklace without telling the girls first. That's a jerk move, Phoebe. Replacing their birthday present without even asking. What was wrong with the headband they got? The end. Post-book follow-up. Phoebe is the fashion fairy, but that's just a framing device. It shows up at the start and end of the book. She doesn't use her fashion magic during the story, and it doesn't help stop the goblin. I like how they defeated the goblin without magic for a change. The last two books had the fairy come up with a random type of magic to solve the problem, i.e. magic to make buckets sticky and candy canes that can herd goblins outside of a room. I thought it was flat out weird how they tried to murder the goblin, but the book treats it as a joke solution. It's mildly creative, as are the illustrations, and it was a huge change for the goblin to not be fooled by the first trick. I give Rainbow Magic number 20, Phoebe the Fashion Fairy, a thumbs up.